Hello everyone, I'm here to start the first few pages in my 2022 Usual Scraps journal. Um, of course, for those of you that have been following um, along with the last few videos, you'll know that um, I created a journal from Junk and Scraps. Um, the second video was um, choosing the signatures and inserting those, and I am really excited to get started. Let me just pop that off to one side, because of course we have also created a Flourish journal as well um, which is a supply journal this just fills me with so much inspiration and so my plan today is to flick through all of the wonderful goodies that are in this um, and pull out a few bits and pieces that I think I might be able to use for today's pages um, this one here you can see I've pulled out that one is definitely going to be used I also put together some ephemera folders as well so I am going to flick through these I've got two of these um, we've got um, another one here. I do want to play around with these because what I'm thinking is that I will eventually have one in subject order and one in colour order. So, you know, that's where I'm getting my supplies from. I also have a whole heap of Happy Mail that I want to use. This is um, a recent Happy Mail I received from my friend Pam and she has sent me all kinds of scraps um, to use. Just look at some of these yummies here and they're all scraps and pieces of junk right up my alley so you know I'll be using things like this as well. I've got a shoe box underneath my desk of Happy Mail that I will be using as well. So let me pull out a few bits and as soon as I've done that I'll be straight but I spent a long time yesterday going through my various supplies, my Flourish journal and the ephemera folders that um, I'd put together. And I have pulled out a few bits and pieces, but I ended up walking away um, because I think the hardest part about starting a new journal is creating that very first page. You are terrified sometimes of um, completely screwing um, it up and getting off to a bad start. So I walked away and I've come back today with very fresh eyes. Now, um, I am going to start off with the very very first page which is unusual for me because I usually start off somewhere in the middle but I want to tackle this one here and I'm going to take this out of the journal which is really easy to do because of my um, elastic binding I just find it um, much easier to work on a flat surface I also pulled out um, a piece of braille paper so I think I want to use this I'm not sure which way up I want to use it um, I do want to cut it down as well because this is covering up too much of that pretty um, background so I'm just going to take this off to the paper trimmer. You can see I've cut my braille paper down, not by much, um, just a little bit. And you can see that I've also folded um, this piece in half again. I'm going to pop that straight back into the Flourish journal. Um, but I think um, that that will just um, take away some of the clutter of that background. I also pulled out this piece of scrapbooking paper. This is donkey's years old and I want to use this. Now what I do want to do is make a pocket um, out of this. And I think what I will do, I mean, colour wise, the colours are just absolutely perfect. And this will make sense um, in a bit when you see the focal image that um, I want to pop inside. I do want to make a pocket um, out of this. So I think what I'm going to do is just add some stitching um, around it here like this. Here's my pocket and you can see that I've added the stitching all the way around. I did cut the flap that was on the top um, there like that off because I thought that would be a waste. You wouldn't see it um, and I can pop that back into the Flourish journal to use for something um, else. Bring in my braille paper and this is how I'm going to layer things. Now the braille paper is just a bit too stark white. So what I'm going to do um, is just ink around the edges of this. Um, let me just put some parchment paper down. I'm going to use bundled sage, which I th I'm hoping will be the right colour to use. And what I will do is just gently ink around the edges. I don't want to apply too much um, ink, but I do, do want to add just a little bit of colour to it, just so that it's not um, so stark, stark white. So I'm going to go all the way around the edge, just to the very edge, just bringing it um, slightly um, into the centre here like this. And this is just one of these cheap makeup brushes that you can get from Amazon and eBay. I think my whole set was about a fiver. Um, I've had it for a couple of a couple of years, maybe three. Um, you can get branded ones, and I honestly don't know whether those are any better. But you know, this this does me absolutely fine. So I'm just going to go all the way around the edge. 
as I say, just just like this. You can see not too much colour, but um, in my opinion, just enough. Um, so that's going to go on there like that, and then that will fit um, onto the background. And I really like the way that, um, that that looks. I'm wondering whether I should perhaps ink around the outside of this as well. And what I've decided to do is do exactly the same to the outside as well. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. So I'm just going to go all the way around the outside as well. And that way it's just tying all of those pieces together so that, um, you know, they coordinate better and just look more cohesive. What it looks like now that I've inked around the edges and of course I can pop my pocket um, on top like this as well. Glue wise, I'm just going to use some three in one. I just want a small amount, which I'm just going to add around the edges. It doesn't matter whether you use three in one or art glitter glue. I'm just going to apply a small amount though, just around the edge. Just use whatever glue you have. I like these um, fine nozzle bottles as well because it stops you adding too much too much glue and then stick stick that down first so i'm just going to centralize this make sure i've got that in the right spot that will do that will do fine and the three in one dries really really quickly let's just put my stopper on the top and then before i glue this down i want to add my focal image now for a focal image i'm going to use one of the tags of the month um, that i made from one of laurie's um, kits um, piles of paragraphs um, so I just need to make sure that that's in the right spot and that was why I used the green because of the the, the green in this tag look how beautifully that goes um, that's like a match made in heaven and it's a shame not to use your own um, artwork so I want to try and incorporate as much of my own artwork in my projects again this year as I can. So I think I want that to go there. So next I can apply some glue around the outside of this. I'm just going to apply it just inside that stitching um, line. It doesn't have to necessarily go right to the very, very edge. I'm not applying any in the middle because I do find with the three in one that it makes pages um, quite stiff and I personally don't like that. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got that um, straight and then my tag can go in there like this. Now I need to just weight this down underneath a heavy book for a minute or two until that glue has grabbed and then I can add it to my journal and that will be my first page done weighted down underneath the heavy book for a few minutes and before I stick it back in the journal I just want to add this quote and so the adventure begins and let me just make sure I've got that um, straight I've added a little bit of extra glue to this as well because um, these Tim Holtz chit chat words um, never stick very well this is the um, small talk by Tim Holtz ideology by the way so let's put it back in the journal and that is the very first page done. So now the pressure is off. Phew, I like that. Sticking with the purple theme, I want to work on this page here and I've pulled out this piece of scrapbooking paper here and this was one of the ones that was gifted to me by my friend Pam. Now let me just take this out of the journal again to work on it so much easier. For a focal image, I want to use this card here. Isn't it beautiful? This is embossed on vellum. And I think this is something that I picked up from the scrap store and just thought it was absolutely beautiful and that I'd be able to use it in a project. And today is the day. I do want to get rid of the pink ribbon though, because I want to try and tie in that purple. We've got pink in the background here, so that works really well, but we need to bring the two colours together. And that is not working for me um, so I'm just going to attempt now to untie this and I do think as well that I am going to cut um, this in half just so that I can do something with the rest of that card as well um, maybe I could have a go at um, embossing myself so I'm just going to chop this in half see I've got the other half now so that will go straight back into the flourish journal 
I've pulled out two pieces of ribbon. Um, these are the only purple ribbons that I've got that I thought would, would work. I'm not sure which one I like the best. I kind of like um, the gingham um, just because it's a little bit darker, but this one would be easier to apply. So I'm just going to have a play around with these um, and just see which one I like the, the look of best. This is just a bent over piece of wire that I use for threading things. It makes life so much easier. So let's have a play around with this and see which one works the best. Squeeze that together so that I can get it through the hole, but it just makes it so much easier to pull to pull through. And then let's pull it through the other side as well. See what this one looks like. I think this one is probably going to work work the best. I do need to um, trim trim that. In fact, actually, let me just, I don't want to waste this ribbon. I don't need anywhere near that much. So let's trim, trim this. And try and tie a bow. Let's just make sure that we've got that equal on either side. I think this is going to work quite nicely, actually. The other one I think would be a little bit too thick. So I think this is the one that I am going to use. So I'm just tying a bow. We can pull it, pull it shorter. Fiddle around with this until we've got it the way that we want it. Yeah, and I think that's going to work quite, um, quite nicely. So let me just fiddle um, around with this with that I think so I'm just going to snip this ribbon off here like that with my nice sharp fabric um, scissors that's fine I do want to glue this down though because I don't know if you can see this paper now that um, I've cut it in half is moving around what I'll do is apply it just to the very edge here because you're not going to um, see it. And I think as well that I want to take this off um, to my sewing machine um, and just stitch along that line there. Can you see we've got um, a line that's been embossed around the edge? You see, if I put glue there, you can't actually see it. I'll do the same on this side here and then I'm going to take that off to the sewing machine again. I just think that sewing um, just adds just a touch of really nice um, detail. Um, I am keeping my pages simple again this year, the same as I did last year. So I'm just going to leave that to dry for a second or two just so that it's um, in the right place. I really like the stitching. It's just added a really nice touch of detail. Um, before I glue anything down, I want to add some ink around the outside just because we've got this really white edge here, which is uh, bothering me. So we'll just add some distress ink just around the outside. Just get rid of that, um, that white. And it will just make this stand out better on the background as well. And then we can glue things down. And I just want to add one more touch of detail to this. And then that's another page um, finished. We're all in the pink and purple today, aren't we? I'm using art glitter glue for this because I do find that on textured wallpaper backgrounds and um, some with sort of like a vinyl feel, 3-in-1 and Fabri-Tac don't um, work very well. I've got no idea why, but they just come unstuck. Whereas um, this art glitter glue sticks to absolutely everything and anything like concrete. I'm going to glue this piece down um, just with the edge on the edge here, just so that we've got more of that pretty border showing as opposed to having it like like that. So I'm going to glue that down next and I might as well use the art glitter glue for this as well, seeing as it's um, here in front of me. Now I just want to add a sentiment to this. You can also see that I did end up adding a tiny bit more of that lace to the edge here as well. And I've just stuck it down so that you can't see um, that join. And my quote for this page is going to be, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. So I'm just going to cut this down. I'll just use scissors for that. Try and get it to some straight as I can. 
of course now we can pop this one back in the journal as well so this is where it came from and that's where it's going to stay for the time being i really like it um, next to this purple page here so carrying on with the pink i want to do something to this double page um spread here well it's not quite a double page spread but um it is almost um of course i pulled out the butterfly gift wrap and let's just open this out i think i'm just going to cover the whole of the, this piece of paper here with some of this this pink and then we need to tone it down somewhat make this a bit more manageable for me to deal with in fact i think i'll turn it this way around and just just cut it just so that i've got um, a smaller piece to glue um, in fact let me just make sure i've got that there as well because knowing me i'll go at a slant and um, end up with not enough paper <laughs> to be able to glue down and then i can put this straight back into the flourish journal so that i've got bits and pieces to use for other projects i'm going to use glue stick um, for this just over the whole of the background and then I'll also use some um, of the art glitter glue as well just around the edges just to make sure that it's not going anywhere but glue stick will just make the whole, whole process a lot easier and again I'm just working on parchment paper here and just add a small amount of um, art glitter glue just around the outside just to make sure that um, it's not going to peel at the at the edges and then let's stick this down here like this and really smooth that paper paper out just try and press out any of those um, those wrinkles I think this paper is just way too bold so i'm going to use some of my authentico chalk wax to hopefully tone it down i've just got a paintbrush and i have tested this on a piece of the scratch paper that i cut off but what i'm going to do is just go over the top of the whole of this piece of paper and look the white chalk is sticking um, in this flock butterfly design and i think that's going to be absolutely gorgeous so i'm just going to go over the whole of this sheet and then because it's um it's wax i'm just going to have to set this aside um just for the wax to dry but i think this is going to be absolutely beautiful oh, that's what it looks like now that it's had a coat of the wax and doesn't that look better so i'm just going to leave this overnight um, and then we can see what it looks like in the morning well this is how my gift wrap looks now now before i went to bed last night i did come in with a microfiber cloth and just gave it um, a good old rub to take the excess wax away um, i weighted it down underneath the heavy book and this is what it looks like um, now that i've come down this morning um, much more subdued i absolutely love it now i've pulled out this napkin and again i just want to keep the simplicity theme going with this journal i think this is going to work absolutely beautifully i think the navy blue or royal blue whatever it is is going to look gorgeous now i do need to cut this down because it's way too big so i think i'm going to take this off to my paper trimmer and um, trim this um, about there I've cut my piece of napkin down and you can still see all those gorgeous butterflies um, in the background, but it just makes that whole piece look less um, sickly. Um, absolutely love that. Now, napkin is really flimsy and as we know, we have to take the um, underplies off as well, otherwise it's not going to stick. I'm going to use a piece of freezer paper. Um, let me just show you the box. So this is Reynolds freezer paper and it's plastic coated and this is used in quilting. It's also um, used for wrapping meat and that kind of thing um, to keep it fresh. Um, and this will stiffen my napkin. Um, many of you will have seen who followed me for a long time will have seen me use this technique before. Now it is not a permanent fix, um, but I'll show you what I'm going to do about that. What I will do, this is starting to roll, but that's okay. I'm going to take the plies apart and um, I do believe this napkin um, is is three ply so let me just try and um, get the plies apart without destroying my napkin you can use um, sellotape to do this if you wish but um, I'm doing the grungy method I don't need to explain do I <laughs> and what I'm going to do 
is just pop my napkin onto the shiny side. Now, let me just explain. This has um, a paper side and a shiny side. And this, the shiny side is where the glue is. So bring in a couple of pieces of parchment paper. I'm going to put one on the bottom. Um, the freezer paper, shiny side up. My napkin doesn't have to be straight because we're going to need to trim this anyway and then another piece of parchment paper over the top and I am going to iron this and what this will do um, is stick my napkin down to that freezer paper so that um, it becomes a workable piece of paper in its own right and brilliant way of, of using napkins and making them more usable apologies um, I think my bracelet is um, clattering on the iron so you'll need to do this for a few seconds just until that glue has melted and you know that your napkin um, is stuck of course mine's sliding around all over the place um, it would have been far easier to have done this um, on my ironing board but um, I wanted to show you at my craft table so you can see exactly how um, it's done and that should um, be stuck now so let's just um, peel peel this off. Just be careful about it. I think I'd got some glue on my parchment paper because this is one that I've used before. But you can now see that that napkin is stuck to that background. Um, and so I've effectively um, got my, uh, myself a piece of scrapbooking paper to use. So I'm just going to take this away now and trim around the edges and I will be back. So I've trimmed around the edges and that's what this looks like now. So it looks like a regular piece of paper. Now, if you don't have freezer paper, you can always glue a napkin to a regular piece of A4 paper or copier paper um, just with a glue stick and you'll have exactly the same thing. You might have a few wrinkles. It might not be a, um, you know as flat as mine is, but it will do the same job. Now, freezer paper, as I mentioned earlier, is not permanent. So what I'm going to do is go and take this to my sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch around the edges just to make sure that this does not come undone. I've sewn around the edges of that napkin and you can see where it's starting to slightly peel. I'm not going to do anything about that. I like that look. It's going to add to the grunginess of it. And over time, I think that will just get better and better. What I do want to do, though, is add some glue to the back side of this um, so that I can stick it down to the centre of this, um, this page. So I'm just going to use a glue stick to do that. That's glued down and the stitching looks great. What I do want to do is just round the corners of this. It's all looking a bit too rectangular. So let's do, do this. I'm just using the um, larger X-cut corner rounder. That looks much, much better to me. And then I thought I would bring in some doilies and I've got three here and oh my goodness me, I cannot make a decision. Do I add just the pink, um, which is very, very pretty, or do I break it up and bring in some of this forget-me-not blue and add this one here and perhaps a white one on top? And I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. What do you think? That or that. I'm going with this option. Let me know whether I've made the right choice because I know that um, you'll all be screaming at me um, down the camera. Um, so how do I want to stick this on? I'm thinking that I might want to add some um, stitching down the middle. Um, let me ponder on that one. I am. I'm going to um, add some stitching. So let me just um, stick some glue here like this and pop that in the middle. I've creased it and folded it um, in half so that I can see where it needs to go. Let me just press that into the centre as well. I'm going to do the same with this one here and then I'm just going to take this off to the sewing machine. I've got cream thread in my sewing machine and I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it um, as it is and that will be fine. And I like the fact that we can have these where they've got some dimension um, to them. I've got my line of stitching down the centre and I'm just going to add a focal image like this. I'm going to use art glitter glue because I do find um, that with anything metal that three in one doesn't really work very well. So we'll just add some here like this, pop that down in the centre and I'm just going to add something heavy on top um, just until that glue grabs. 
I am so happy with that. Isn't that just a gorgeous, gorgeous page? I just want to add one more thing. I've got this quote here, treasure, noun, precious materials and objects, verb, to cherish and take much care of something. And I'm just going to pop this down here like this. In fact, let me do it in my left hand just so that I get it um, in the right place. And I'm just going to stick that down just like that. And that's that page um, done. Bring back the journal and let's put this back where it um, came from. Where did it go? I think it was here, wasn't it? So let's just slide, slide this in. Um, I don't know what to do about that purple page. I think I'm going to take that out and put that some, somewhere else um, just because I like having that as a double page spread in its own right and um, maybe I can just um, pop that behind there for the time being and we'll decide what to do with that at um, a later date isn't that just gorgeous I'm leaving that there for today. I'm really pleased with these pages. And if any of you want to follow along with this series, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. So please do feel uh, free to come along and join us. Um, just be aware there are four um, entry questions that you will need to answer to gain entry into the group. And if you don't answer them, your request to join will be automatically declined. So that's just something to be aware of. That's just for our Facebook um, security. But, you know, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's got you off to a good start do let me know what you think in the comments below don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week as well and see what she's been up to and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so that if you want to follow along with this series you get notifications of all of my up and coming videos um, but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now